The NFL's back, college football's back, and the green light gambling coffers are full, at least for a few hours. Let's do this. Hey guys, I'm Chris Long. I'm a really excited Chris Long. And this is the Green Light Gambling Show. Presented by DraftKings, we have NFL picks for week one. We've got our college game of the week. That's right, college football game of the week. It's happening. Yeah. And that is Georgia Tech, Florida State. Uh, And we'll kick off our joint bank account, which we'll explain in a bit. And that's going to be a lot of fun. But joining me always uh, is my partner in crime here who's shown me the ropes in the gambling world. You're kind of a bad dad in my life. Uh, Stanford Steve. I've been called that before. Yes, I have. I have been definitely been called that. How are we doing, Steve? <laughs> awesome, brother. You? Oh, man, I'm good. Like, the, the, it's the, here. The, it's here. The humidity. Did you think we were going to get here? No, but like, it's getting cooler out. It's, I've seen some leaves falling. Mm. And it wasn't one of these things where you've had this month where you're like, all right, football's coming. I kind of, I kind of hadn't thought about it. And here we are. I mean, tonight. Yeah. We've got, as we record this on a Thursday, we've got a big game tonight, which we're not going to give out any uh, plays on because uh, by the time you you uh, you watch this, it'll be Friday. We do have three of our best NFL picks apiece. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this a little bit last week. This is going to be tough week one. I mean, it's just, there's so many unknowns. Uh, hopefully we don't embarrass ourselves in the spirit of... That's hard to do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> In the spirit of uh, seniority, I'm going to let Steve go first and give me his three uh, NFL best plays this Sunday, opening week. Let's get into it right away, okay? Because this could be a one-time deal only the whole NFL season. I love the Bengals this week. (laughs) I love them. I love what I hear about the offense. I understand Burrow. It's not going to be as easy as it was at LSU. I get that. But he's got a ton of... A ton of weapons. A.J. Green, comeback player of the year this year. Boyd's the other receiver. They drafted Higgins. Mixon got a new deal. And Burrow, I mean, with that offense, I I just feel like uh, Taylor's got what he wants. I know the offensive line has been abysmal, but they can't be worse than they have been in years past. They cannot be. And I think Burrow is that smart where he can help his offensive line a lot by just getting rid of the ball in bad circumstances and just getting to the next down. I think he's one of those guys that could do that. So we're going Bengals plus three at home. The Bengals are 6-0 and in their last six regular season games straight up against the Chargers. Mm. So take that, too. Mm. Uh, Russell Wilson, got to take him week one. The numbers are not great for the old Seahawks. They're 0-4-1 against the spread in their last five week one games. We're throwing that out the window. I love the Seahawks secondary with the addition of Adams. Uh, I can't wait to see the matchup against the Falcons skill guys on the perimeter. And I look at this as a head-to-head Russ versus Matt Ryan. I love both guys, but I'm going to take Russ in this circumstance. And then finally, my Super Bowl team, the Dallas Cowboys, laying three. I don't don't like the Rams. I I heard you talk about a little bit, I think, last week, but – that offensive line for the Rams, yeah. I think, I think McVay did a lot of you know create creativity wise of you know whether they're just going with those zone actions away mm-hmm. and just create you know all that naked stuff that they get with golf. I just think teams are able to game plan that. We obviously saw the Patriots do it a couple of years ago in the Super Bowl, but it's it's just gotten more. Um, uh, I, I think it's gotten more complex for the Rams to have to handle all these different things that people are throwing at them. And I just don't think they have the personnel for them. I agree. Uh, so I, I agree. I, agree. I, uh, I really like what Dallas has. I really, really do. So uh, I'm going to lay three on, you know, it's, it's weird. Like we're saying we're going to lay points. We don't like, I don't ever like laying points on the road, but there's not really home field advantages. No, right. there's not. You know? And so what does so, that mean? How is Vegas? I mean, are they giving that three point, like uh, advantage yeah. to Dallas in this situation or I, to, to LA in this situation as if it were a normal uh, NFL game? No, I heard a couple guys with that do a bunch of power ratings and stuff like that. And they were talking about like the saints instead of three, it was like a point and a half now. Yeah. So I thought, which was really interesting because now you see the saints are made are favored by three and a half over to, over the Buccaneers. 
And, you know, three and a half is a lot different than three. So that yeah. tells you that they're, they're, they do think a, a little bit about it, uh, you know, going across a key number like three uh, with that one and a half uh, home field. So, and, and then off topic here, but kind of on topic, I mean, Denver has to have some of the best home field advantage yes. still mathematically. No doubt. I mean, all things considered equal. If there were n- no fans in the stands across the league, that's one team with mm-hmm. an advantage. And some teams that have been traditionally dog shit and have no fans in the stands, they might they might feel a little bit of a lift this year because <laughs> the, the equalizer did you, factor. Did you have a, did you have a team in mind when you just said that? Or? Well, I mean, I, I I listen. I'm I I'm a Chargers supporter. I also felt really bad for them having gone to play there and them having to go on silent count at home. Uh, yeah. Eagles fans travel great, but it wasn't just us. I mean, when they were at that StubHub Ticket City Center, which, you know, it's it, I, to see getting hydrated for the weekend, Poland Spring. Trying, brother. I love water Trying. out of the jug there. Got it. You know. That's how I get my gallon. You got to have I, your I, gallon. I lose track. I, I lose track. That's I don't great. that. That's great. Then I'm, 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 I'm losing count. That's great. No, I mean, L- LA is a team that they might be like, huh. No fans in the stands is really not a bad thing. It means the visiting stands can't, fans can't come either. So, <laughs> I, listen, you're, I, I wouldn't go against you on any of these picks. In fact, we share one, and I'll get to that in a minute. But okay, I like Dallas a lot. I know this is kind of a Philly uh, Philly show, and last year they they fooled me like they did most people, and like they do year in and year out. I do think they make a deep run this year. Also, your Cincinnati pick, love it, and the fun factor there is great. We've all been waiting with bated breath. Yeah. To watch Joe Burrow play his first game. This Absolutely. Is a bet. This is a bet we can all get behind. So I like that yeah. one. And then we share a pick on on Seattle, um, laying two points on the road uh, in Atlanta. And I think this is where Russ's MVP season starts. I do. Um, never had one. It starts uh, this Sunday. Where are the Falcons really young and unknown? It's in the secondary. It's the corner position. And to me – where they've really beefed it up for Russ has been uh, at wide receiver. And, you know, something like a Josh Gordon is a luxury to say, hey, if this pans out, we're really good. And we're mm-hmm. we're pretty damn good anyway at skill. And so I think, you know, I'll give the advantage to Russ straight out of the offseason. I think they light him up. I think there's a lot of scoring. I see Todd Gurley having a good game, being okay. fresh. Um, I think the Seattle secondary closes this thing out. So uh, Seattle pulls away, covers easily. Uh, also, you gave me some negative Hawks numbers against the spread. Uh, 11, 4, and 1 against the spread. The last 16 road games they've got. Russ, East Coast misnomer. Uh, Falcons are 0 and 4 against the spread the last four games, week one, and 1 and 5 against the spread in their last six in September. So give me Seattle. I think eventually they pull away. I also like Philly. Yes, this is a Philly pod. I'm nervous about this one. This is my most fascinating game of the week. I can't. I have no idea what's going to happen in this game. I'm going to take a stand and and take the Eagles. They are um, like again all favorites for me this week. Laying five and a half uh, on the road, short bus ride down to Washington. You got an angry Zach Ertz, not getting his contract. He's kind of mm. doesn't seem like they want me around. Carson's going to say, "Hey, buddy, here's the ball," and Zach Ertz is going to go off. Uh, you've got a revamped D line that's raring to go in Philly, and I think that a lot of people have disrespected that group by calling Washington the, the class of the NFC East up front. That D line's pretty damn good. Malik Jackson is like a new player for them. He got hurt in like the first quarter of that game last year yeah. in Washington. I also think Hargrave is going to make a big, big difference. The, the the swing players for Philly are Sweat and Barnett, but you've got Fletcher Cox and BG too. I think the Eagles are going to have trouble running the ball, even though Washington was bad last year. They'll get better up front. Uh, just by mm-hmm. virtue of going to a 4-3, Jack Del Rio. Miles Sanders, don't know where he is. I still think they pull away. Uh, and you have to remember, Washington on the other side of it, it's not like they're a pillar of continuity. They've got Scott Turner trying to implement a new offense. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see your boy Antonio uh, Gibson from Memphis, though. Absolutely. I Might mean, be getting a little Bryce Love action, too. Yeah, you could. Watch out for Bryce. You can, And, and you, you know, uh, another guy I, I love uh, – who was in the college ranks last year that Washington's going to be using is Gandy Golden from Liberty down there uh, in Virginia. He's a big target. McLaren went off last year against Philly. Love him. So I don't know if there's any prop bets for McLaren uh, over 100 yards. I would say look hard at it, but also realize Darius Slay's going to follow him. Um, And that's going to make a big difference. So 
Too close for comfort last year. Haskins played well. Give me uh, the Eagles, though, to pull away and cover this year. And then finally, Buffalo is a no-brainer for me. I love the Bills team this year. I don't, I don't want to overthink it. They've gotten better. They're going to kill the Jets. The Jets are not ready yet. I love Sam Darnold. But the talent, even a great GM like Joe Douglas has got some work to do there. Uh, and, and this ain't their year. You got Diggs, you got Josh Allen. Does he take the next step? Zach Moss, it'll be a fun game to get going for them. I think they roll. Last year, uh, they, I believe they beat up on them twice. I'd have to go back and look at it. But those are my three. Give me Seattle, Buffalo, and give me Philly, uh, all against the spread uh, favorites this week. So that there's our NFL picks. Uh, let's just go right into college football here, and you're, you're the guy when it comes to this, and I am admittedly mm. out of the loop. First off, tell me what the – Frick is going on in college football right now. Okay. First of all, here, here's the thing, Chris, is no one likes to see what the line is going to be for the, for the coming week more than me. Sundays, I'm re- hitting refresh on my computer all day at work while I'm watching NFL, trying to see what the lines are for the following week. Yeah. This year, I have it's, – it's scary. I don't, I don't want to know because you, you could see a number like, oh, my God, I love this number, and what's going to happen? We that team that you had could lose five of their starters right. later in the week with a COVID announcement. Yeah. So you really got to be careful, um, you know, betting early in the week, which is something I used to like to do because I thought the number was bad. And then, you know, as, try and get on the right side of a number, um, just being early to the thing. So that's definitely taken me away a little bit with the anticipation and the insight, the excitement of seeing the lines for week one. But we still got to wait for the SEC. We're still two weeks away from them. The Big 12 is playing a bunch of out-of-conference games. The ACC is going to play one out-of-conference game against a team that's from your state. Right. But, they're, but the majority of those guys are all playing conference games in the ACC this week. So I look at Florida State and Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech still in year two after trying to get out of the option. And then Florida State has Mike Norvell come in, who is, uh, comes from Memphis. Memphis, Memphis yeah. average. But, you know, average for over 40 points a game uh, last year. And I just look at two teams in transition offensively. I think Florida State has some guys on D on the D line. Uh, Marvin Wilson, Marvin Wilson's a, a top uh, first round talent for them. And I just Georgia Tech is, you know, their coach Collins, he loves doing interviews, but he's one of those guys that just doesn't like giving you any information when he gives you. So they have four right. guys that are going so for their quarterback doing position. Interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, they have four guys going for their quarterback position, but he's not telling you who who, who they're going to start. They have two four star guys that people in Atlanta are really excited about, um, but you don't know if you're going to see him, you know, throw them against this Florida State D line. So I think the play is the under. Yeah, uh, I think it's down to like fifty two and a half. I think it's going to be sloppy. Uh, I understand games are going to be sloppy for reasons uh, that we saw, like Navy the other night who didn't tackle. Yeah, uh, and I saw that the first series. That was the easiest live bet game of my life. Yeah. If, uh, if you watch the first couple series of that one. Um, so we're, I'm going to lean towards the under here in uh, in Florida State, Georgia Tech. We talked about it earlier. So much unknown. Really go – don't go crazy, people. I know you're getting um, uh, all your accounts filled <laughs> with your cash and, and backloading things and trying to get bonuses from, from DraftKings and, and everybody else. But be careful, um, you know. And yeah, most importantly, would you say don't be, bet any money you don't have? Is it is it even harder to call the college football stuff than the pro football stuff? Strangely, even though relatively speaking, yeah, like, just because of information. Yeah, like I, I think it's oh, like Lincoln Riley said the other day. He's like, we're not giving out any COVID uh, information. Wow, you know, so it's. I mean, there's just so many more players involved, and you know the 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 idea, the eyeballs are you know they're not. Everything doesn't is not nothing's covered like the NFL. Is, a lot of late you know? night Saturday buzzed bets being laid and early Sunday morning hangover bets. No early week action. No, 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 no. Exactly. And yeah. the other thing is, we're not going to really have a lot of late Saturday night football. So East yeah. Coast people are going to be able to go to bed earlier. Oh, that's I think I only saw one. The only the, the the farthest team West that's playing is BYU. And I think they have one 10 o'clock home game this year. Oh, wow. So wow. you can get to bed early. Kids nice. will be happy that's a with. plus. I love you. You'll get some donuts hours. early on Sunday morning. Ooh, that's the, you know, what kills me is Big Cat posts a picture every Sunday. And actually that picture has prompted me to go get donuts before. Just really? opening, you know, you wake up, you open your Twitter and it derails your whole day. 
How many donuts is acceptable on a Sunday morning? How many are there at the table? I don't know. What do you, what do, you do? You put a limit on yourself? <laughs> no, I, I I try not to because I could I could go in. I can go. I try not to go out and buy donuts. Am I should I, will, buy, should I, I be should I be ashamed if I go three? No, three's nothing, huh? No. Gosh, I'm such a baby, man. I have two and I'm Seriously, like, Seriously, what's I, wrong with I feel with awful. You? I, I don't feel awful. I just feel like, I don't know, maybe I'm losing my... You're 35. A 38 and a half, evidently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go joint bank account. And for, for those of y'all uh, okay. listening out here, uh, it's a new segment yep. uh, for me and Steve. And it's pretty simple. Steve, myself, and a member of the Greenlight Gambling Faithful are gonna each pick a leg of a three bet parlay. We only win if all three bets hit, of course. Sometimes we're gonna be having fans, some of y'all out there, uh, picking the third leg. Today, I'm gonna have our uh, our esteemed producer, Cowboy Reed, who's getting the mic ready to to give his big pick. Uh, We're gonna have him pick the first leg. And we're gonna do NBA since you know it's Friday. We we don't forget about the NBA, which has been just killing me, killing my bank account. You could um, stop, you know. Huh? You could stop. I take, could take stop. a time out. Take a time out. I, I could take a, st- a time out, but all everything's it's all relative. Uh, and you know you can't take it with you. So <laughs> <laughs> I want my kids to 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 have to work for things. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's, gotcha. that's what I'm doing. I'm instilling values in them. By getting mm-hmm. rid of some of this excess cash, um, makes sense. Cowboy Reed, you can start it off with an over under you like tonight, and me and Steve will pick uh, somebody against the spread or a money line uh, as far as Boston, Toronto, which is Game Seven. I cannot believe that they've let Toronto back in that series. How and, about that game yesterday? Oh, oh dude, haymakers, man, just dizzy. Haymaker people, after haymaker. People were just like Crazy. stumbling down the court. It so was good. it was crazy, and then uh, obviously the late game is going to be Denver, LA, which I'd love for it to be fun, but it just looks like it's you know the cream's going to rise to the top there. Cowboy Reed, start us off with with leg one. Leg one, I like the over Denver, LA. Um, everyone had heard what Michael Porter Jr. said about yeah. getting the, yeah. um, the rest of the team involved outside of Murray and Jochich. Um, Murray hasn't had any of his 50-point game that no, he had. he has not had any you know, explosions. In, in the first week um, or first round. I, I'm i thinking he's going to go for go for a 40-point Yeah, there piece. we go. I like um, it. I like and it. then Paul George. <laughs> yeah. He, after the game two loss, he was 12 of 18, 5 of 7 from deep for 32 points in the game three win. Last night, um, or two nights ago, he was 4 for 10 for 4. Or 10 points. Playoff P. He's going to go for another big piece. Offensive explosion. Denver, LA, going to be the over. Okay. Man. Uh, ew, I'm looking at the money line here. Minus 136. What do you think? Teamwork makes the dream work. I don't see Kemba being... I think Kemba's going out with a big bang. No, that's what I'm saying. So I'm like, I, I, I think it's going to be tight. It's, it's, I'm afraid that it's going to be tight inexplicably they've let i think nick nurse is amazing the fact that we're we're even sitting here in game seven no doubt i think it's gonna be a tight ball game give me the celtics in the money line so uh joint bank account review here i've got uh i've got the c's uh on the money line and stanford steve you have whom um i'm gonna go with the clippers i think the nuggets have tapped out 3-1 deficit you saw it a little bit late last night um, that jazz defense is not there uh, for Jamal Murray to uh, go off on. So I think hearing the Clippers nonstop talking from the bench is going to eat at Denver, and they might be time to peace out from the bubble. So uh, yeah. we're going to lay the points and take the Clippers. Yeah, so we've got C's, money line. We've got Clips running away with this thing, covering uh, minus eight, uh, home court advantage. Um, <laughs> and then we've got... We've got the over. Cowboy Reed likes the over in the late game. So, yeah, there you have it. That is uh, that is our joint bank account first segment. So next week, one of you lucky listeners can be Cowboy Reed, which is even cooler Ooh. than it sounds on on the podcast. I mean, Cowboy Reed's got a fucking sick life. Where's the cowboy camp? 
We don't have that. The what? The cowboy cam? We don't have one yet. We're working uh, on that. What's, yeah. what's our budget on this show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll get you that sound drop for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. So there we, there you have it, guys. Week one, man. Sports are back. Like it just gives me such hope. Uh, you know, we've got we we've got our three picks a piece to review. Uh, Steve likes Dallas uh, laying three on the road uh, against LA. He likes Seattle doing the same in Atlanta. Uh, that's two and Cincy uh, home dogs, right? They're home dogs getting three points uh, against the Chargers, who we have no idea what they're going to be like this year. I like Philly down in Washington, giving five and a half. I like Seattle as well as uh, Steve. And then I like Buffalo. All right, well, yep. we'll, we'll be back next week uh, for more green light gambling with, uh, with my friend Stanford Steve and Hopefully we will be a little heavier in the pockets. We'll see. Good luck. Let's go. It's here. Mills Lane. Let's get it on.